Hi, it's Brent Fitz here. Uh, we're in Poland, lovely Poland, at the uh, Atlas Arena. It's uh, it's Slash. Check it out. Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. Uh, we're on the Living the, the Dream tour, and uh, let's have a little look at the drum kit. Um, so this is the this is the machine, the center of the kit, and um, I guess got, have a look. Check it out. Um, what's best to start? Maybe this. Let's talk snare drums. DW kit. This is my uh, my my favorites are always the maple shells. Um, these. This is a uh, 13, 16, 18 black lacquer DW maple kit. The the bearing edges that I had done by them are a little more softer. So the kit actually has a real sort of warm um, tunes, really nice. Um, and uh, I just found it was a little more mellower, not so. Um, you know, some of the overtones were a little more mellow in this. I'm using uh, Emperor, uh, clear Emperor heads on the kit. And the kick drum is a 26 by 16 with the new Steve Smith, mm, I think it's a signature, or it's basically a black dot head. I think it's a uh, Phalum 3. Oh, let me ask. You know, like what the. You have to look it up. Yeah, so. I just got these, so bear with me. Um, so it's a, it's got a black dot on it. It's a killer kick head because it lasts longer. But it's the, um, it's the. I, I know what it is. It's power stroke with a black dot. So it's kind of a new thing. And I use the little, um, the extra little phalum dots as well. And I'm using f the felts uh, on the kick drum pedals right now uh, with it as well. But um, so black DW kit. Uh, the snare drum, I'm into the steel snares on this kit. I have two kits going on tour right now. I have um, a stainless steel DW kit on my other rig. So we're on the, this is like our European rig right now. So um, I really like just the good old steel snare drums on tour. It's a six and a half. And I think on my other kit, I was using like maybe a nickel over steel or something. But so these are just good, good old workhorse touring snare drums. And in the studio, sometimes I like, you know, some different snares. But um, I wanted to mention a, a little secret weapon that I, I discovered while in the studio, which is <clears throat> the Big Fat Snare Drum. And uh, this is my new favorite addition, and it's a, a $20 investment if anyone who's going to the, you know, your local store and wants to buy one. It's the coolest thing. I, I was doing a session up in Canada, and a, a producer was like, hey, if, you know, we want to get this really fat snare sound, uh, try this. And I was like, well, I used to do this in the 80s. We would cut our, our snare heads up and, and throw this on. But I don't know what it is about this particular um, design with the, the edging, but it just sounds amazing. So that's your standard, you know. Right, standard, you know, like with no ring on it whatsoever. Um, so we add this. I just love it because it basically turns it into a, a much deeper, much fatter uh, snare sound. So I think for like you know doing rock and and uh, the, the type of music we're playing, it just it sort of fits in nice with the the uh, the mix. So our sound guy was getting used to it at first because he was like, wow, it's, it's certainly something different. But that's been my secret weapon lately is using this like the entire show. And I used it in the studio and I was like, I'm going to, you know, add it to the, the, to the live kit. So it's, 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 uh, it's been working out great. Um, What's the snare? That's steel. Steel yeah, six and that. a half. Um, okay. The, oh, I'm using the new DW uh, extended footboard kick pedals too and hi-hat because I have you know pretty big feet so it's really great that they've come up with you know an extra probably inch longer uh, pedals now uh, so they're they're great for for guys with you know larger feet and uh, and as well on the on the hi-hat um, of course all the W9000 uh, series hardware and I like straight stands for the crashes old school and uh you know maybe for the for the ride you know using the uh the extender arm on it but um everything's pretty you know classic old school one up two down i just added a pancake dw pancake drum over here just for some effects at the end of 
songs and um, of course the cowbell is very important in a lot of music that we're doing with Flash and Guns N' Roses songs that over the years so it's sort of been incorporated into everything we're doing with all you know a lot of the new music so um, and this is an LP custom one of a kind because it's a chrome uh, bell with a Ridge Rider on it so when I had them you know try a couple different Ridge Riders to see which one sounded and didn't choke the drum too much but I was using these chrome bells for the longest time that were fatiguing after like six shows and I, I just had to you know figure out a new plan so I love the, the look of a chrome bell and I wanted to get one with a Ridge Rider on it so uh, I don't know if you're going over to DW asking them uh, or LP, you know, hey, I want one of those. I, I, uh, I'm maybe getting in trouble here saying, I don't know if you can get one yet, but maybe ask them. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got to introduce you to Imy James, my drum tech, who just recently won Top Dog Award. Imy, he's Top Dog, Top <laughs> Drum Tech. Uh, so uh, I'm very honored to have him on tour uh, with me right now. He's worked with... Uh, well, you were out on Guns N' Roses on the last three years, uh, doing Frank, and you've worked for uh, Daniel Adair. Those are both DW guys. Yeah, yep. And I know you did... Uh, Pork Coleman. Yeah, Pork Coleman with, uh, with Prince. Prince yeah, and then you did Tommy Aldridge for many, many years. Yeah. He's, of course, one of our heroes. So uh, so this is kind of Imy's world as well. I don't know if he can add to it, but I'm not the greatest PR guy and talker about stuff. But I'm happy to, you know, talk about drums because I, I, you know... I'm proud and love the gear, but uh, yeah. did we miss anything? Cymbals? Yeah, you want to talk about Sabians? Talk about cymbals, so, obviously. you know, I've been playing, I'm Canadian, so I grew up in Canada where yeah. Sabian's factory is, and I've been playing these since, uh, I think they came out in 1981, so I've, I've always played Sabians, and I love them. And uh, recently I've gotten into the HHX series, so I was using the Legacy Ride uh, and the HHX uh, hi-hats. These sound great, so they have the you know, the, the, the bottom hat has the, the ridges in it, so they're a little crispier for live, but um, I was using the um, accelerator hats, and these are actually a little mellower, and they, they kind of just fit in a little better um, for, for what we're doing right now, but everything AAX series for crashes, I like real big, explosive, not really uh, thick crash cymbals, and I don't hit them too hard, so I'm never like breaking a ton of cymbals, but I like thinner cymbals, I like bigger 20 inch, 20 inch, 20 inch, 19 uh, crashes. Uh, that's an ISO, and I don't even think they, um, it's kind of a special, uh, it was a couple years ago that they had put it through on the Cymbal t Vault Tour, and uh, I just loved it. I'm still using them. They have, you know, holes in them, and I don't know if that's a regularly available cymbal, but it's still one of my favorites, and I love it for crashing in choruses of songs. It's fucking great. Uh, excuse me. So uh, this is a probably a raw bell crash. Sometimes it changes, but sometimes a stage crash or a raw bell. Uh, and these are explosions. This this is the go-to. Anyone that's just like, hey, I need a good you know rock crash symbol to uh, to add to my kit. Uh, a 19 inch or 20 inch explosion is killer. I love that symbol. They've had them for years, and that's always my go-to. So so that's my favorite Sabian symbol right there. Um, that's a 19 inch extreme china, and that's basically the gist of the, the ride? kit. Okay. Yeah, the ride's the legacy. The legacy. It's okay. a 22, yeah. and um, I used to use 24s for a while. I was kind of like playing with a few different sizes, but these are sort of my. This is the setup, give or take a few inches on the on the the crash. Um, but I've kind of felt comfortable with 22s again, and I'm almost always using a 13, 16, 18 kit. Sometimes I've had on tour a 28 inch kick drum. DW made me a whole bunch of great kits from last year with 28s. But um, I switched over to a stainless steel kit on the other rig that we're using, and they only make 26. So I said, all right, I'm going to commit to this tour to two separate kits with 26s. So we got 26 here, and it, it just sounds, you know, sounds great. Um, so I think you know sticks. Sticks. Oh, Vader. I'm in, so in love with these. So these are the Vader MV10, and they're like a 2B. I played 2Bs my whole life, but what I wanted was a little extra length. And uh, I'm tall, and I like you know to be able to reach around the kit. And uh, but I didn't want a bulky 2B that made me feel kind of sluggish as well playing you know like big, big uh, 
arena. So, okay, check it out. This MV10 is just a little bit thinner than a 2B, and it's three quarters of an inch longer. So it feels like it's a it's a thick stick, but yet it doesn't feel thick. So I love it. And I use grip tape because I just sort of feel like it's a... I never used grip tape years ago, but more so maybe in the last seven or eight years I've been adapting it. And because the stick is thinner and I put the grip tape on it, these just feel very fast around the kit. And, uh, and I only use one pair of sticks during the show usually. People ask me all the time, how many uh, pairs of sticks do you go through? Even I, me, our first day working together, he was like, well, do you like to use a bunch of, you know, change up sticks halfway through the show? I'm like, no, same, same sticks during the show. So, um, so this is my sound check pair and I'll probably use these during the gig and they'll probably last me the whole night. And if I break one, it's a rarity, maybe on the, the ride or something, but I just love these Vaders because they, um, they've just been, I don't know, they're, they're, uh, just feel great because they're a little bit smaller than the two B's and they feel real faster on the kit. So an MV 10 is a marching stick. It's not like a normal, a lot of guys ask, well, I don't see them in the music stores all the time to buy one. It's because it's a specialty stick because it's a little bit, bit longer. So, um, yeah, these are my, my go-to sticks. One last thing. Yeah. Oh, I just got this. This is the Porter and Davies, the TT6. So this is the, uh, you know, the, the thumper built into the, the actual stool itself. I'm, uh, I really like the, the bicycle seat style. Yeah. And I had this one custom made with just a leather top. Um, so I think what the deal is, is that uh, with the TT6, you can use your own power amp because I had um, already some power amps just off stage here that were you know, in the rig for, the, for many years. And we just like added this to this on the last tour. And uh, so now I don't have like hardware sticking out in the bottom, but this thing is like, you, you don't have to turn it up very much, but I mean, you literally feel it in your you entire get, body. A massage. You <laughs> could get an enema if you weren't careful, <laughs> but um, it's really great because it's so precise. You know, you hit, there's no latency. And uh, so, I mean, it really helps. There's no monitors here. There's no extra, you know, subs. I don't, I, um, I use the, the JH Audio Roxanne's, you know, the in-ears with this I, and it's perfect. It's, it's so great. It's like, you know, keeps, there's no extra speakers, you know, blasting into the kit and we don't have monitors out front either. So everybody's on in-ears. Amps are blasting here though, bass and slash on guitar here. But otherwise, you know, everything's really tight. So by the way, I, I could mention these um, because they exist and people might be like, what are those? But we're using plexiglass in front of the, the, um, the two crash symbols. And what it's been doing is helping just bring down some of the volume out front for miles, for vocals, you know, where cymbals bleed into to vocal mics. But uh, it's not really a drum related question, but it's still relevant to, to the kit. So, um, so <clears throat> that's really, I think, you know, that's it. That's a lot of babbling. Hope it. Hope it was. Uh, <laughs> hope it was cool. Cheers. That's Imi. Don't forget to say. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks.